<laughs> All right, so when I saw that I was on the list to evaluate Laura, I was a little nervous because I love evaluating, but I've heard Laura speak once and she was really good. <laughs> <laughs> so you came in um, already as a, as a natural speaker and the difficulty that, that I have before me is that you're doing this speech in front of military. I'm so not military. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm sitting here watching your speech, the content was great. You were completely organized. Uh, what you were saying will ring true to everyone, whether it was military or not. I got I got stuck on connecting with what you were saying though because you didn't smile once. And I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're giving a speech to I, how many people are gonna be there? Two hundred and twenty, right, that's what you said. Two hundred and twenty. They're all gonna be sitting there serious. So are you allowed to lighten up the mood? <laughs> and engage them because hi, one thing you said to me is that you're supposed to inspire these people. I don't know how you inspire someone not smiling. Like I, I, I sat there and I tried to think of any time I had been inspired by someone that wasn't smiling at me because that's a positive thing. So I don't know if that's allowed, but I would definitely encourage to like <laughs> break in a smile or you know something because when you don't smile, your voice tends to be monotone. So if your voice is monotone, again, you know, remembering in school that teacher that spoke in monotone, did you ever pay attention to that teacher? No. But when their voice elevates and changes, it, make, it brings your attention back in if that person isn't paying attention. So I would think, I would take some of your bullet points, and um, you said in one of them about someone that, um, the soldiers that have taken, that have lost their lives, and you just brushed right over that like it was no big deal. Like that, that's a big deal. So to gesture that somehow, your eyebrows raised a little when you said that, but that was it. You know, you were, you were military. <laughs> so it's hard because I don't know how unmilitary you can be in a speech from the military. That was my difficulty. Like, I want to say so much, but I don't know what box she has to fit in for the speech. No box. No box. No box. Okay. So, so if you're going to be at a lectern, right? Well, eventually, I hope not to. But okay. Because she's not going to be at a lectern. Oh, when she gives it? Yeah. yeah. So you'll be in the crowd? Well, on a, on a stage. Oh, okay. I, so I will not use a lectern by the Because that was my other thing, is that you were, you were stuck behind here, and so I didn't... I felt when I was watching you that it may have been the safety blanket, because um, you didn't move at all. You know, and so that was the other thing, is when you're trying to inspire people, a statue isn't very inspirational unless that person looking at the statue is putting forth the effort to find the meaning behind it. So, you, you know, I would encourage you to, to just be more movable. I mean, if, if not gestures, arms, something, so that it's engaging to them, so that those words, the content that you have that's so amazing will be heard by them. So that was the one thing that, um, it's the content's great, and then it's just working on making your delivery more diverse to be able to reach everyone. Um, but everything was very calculated. Your PowerPoint, uh, I would put like some inspiring image that depicts ethics. Because again, you know, if you didn't have many words up there at all, which is great, that is like rule number one when it comes to PowerPoint. So that was perfect. But, um, but they're just words. So a lot of people are visual, and, and they may not even read those words, but they may see a warm and fuzzy picture, and then they'll go to the <coughs> words, and then it'll bring them into what you're saying as well. Um, in regards to the PowerPoint, I don't know how your setup's going to be for your actual presentation, but it was very distracting every time I saw you turn right, especially when it would have been more... Um, it 
would have flown better if you would have turned this way, but for some reason you just had to go, you know, and like break your neck to look this way. And so it was it was very distracting. So I would just be prepared to know your setup and um, and practice it without having to look at the screen because that and that's when you're a really sharp speaker is when you can just press the button and you know it's going to the next thing. And that's kind of why we have that laptop over there. Okay. <laughs> so you did a really great job. Smile, move around. Um, practice not looking at the TV or the screen, but absolutely great job. I'm horrible with fillers, as everyone knows, and you never have a filler. I don't know how you do it, but it is absolutely amazing, and it was a pleasure of value.